This is Craig Stumbaugh from Jupiter Systems. I'd like to thank everyone for joining us for the Canvas Video Wall Collaboration Solution webinar. Today, we're going to go through the uh, Canvas software and have an idea of some of the capabilities that are in the Canvas software. And joining me today is Erwin Daly, our senior sales engineer for Worldwide Presales. And Erwin is going to be in charge of demoing the software as we go through the webinar this evening. I'd like to thank everybody for taking the time to join us. And uh, we're gonna hold the questions until the end. So please feel free to submit questions in the Q&A portion of Zoom and we will use the uh, final portion of the webinar to answer as many questions as possible. Even though we're slated for an hour, uh, we're happy to go beyond that to try and make sure that we cover uh, and answer all the questions that are asked. So with that, we'll get started. So Canvas is a unified software suite designed to provide the ability to seamlessly view, control, and manage content, not only on video walls, but within any Canvas endpoint that is utilizing the Canvas client or Canvas web client. The security features built into Canvas are integration into Active Directory, and this allows us to manage access to sources to be viewed, the ability to change sources or control sources or edit layouts as they may be. And all of this is managed uh, through the Canvas server and the Active Directory integration. In addition to that, we also encrypt all of the sources to protect that content as it's being viewed on any device that's hosting a Canvas client or using a Canvas web client. That content can be viewed on PCs, laptops, tablets, or smartphones. And again, all that content is encrypted for secure viewing, control, or management. Canvas also has the ability to uh, allow users to collaborate with each other in either the same facility or anywhere in the world, wherever they may be, they can connect back to the corporate network through VPN and they can collaborate with their peers or manage content on video walls. And all that is done through the Canvas web client. So why Canvas? Most importantly, today, it keeps you engaged with your organization's operation from anywhere. And we're all working from home or working remotely and being able to stay engaged and view content or data or other sources that are relevant to your organization's operation are crucial. And Canvas gives you this ability, again, in a secure and encrypted environment. Canvas is trusted by industry professionals in all vertical markets, whether it be security, utility, emergency, enterprise, network, traffic, and process control rooms. The enterprise features include high availability for automatic failover in the event that there is a device that fails. Canvas will continue to operate and maintain access and viewability of the sources or content. There's also the security integration with Active Directory, again, to maintain that uh, tight security from end to end. Canvas and all of the hardware that's designed by Jupyter, uh, the Catalyst Display Wall processors are designed for 24 seven mission critical applications. And the Canvas software platform uh, not only supports the Catalyst hardware processors, but also third party hardware, such as PCs and mobile devices. So let's take a look at some of the capabilities that a Canvas client has not only to manage the video wall, but more so for the user, for the operator, and what their uh, capabilities are directly in front of them on their device. First of all, there's no limit to the number of simultaneous Canvas clients that are on the system, viewing potentially the same source or sources, or collaborating with one another, no matter where they are in the world. 
So there's no limit to the number of clients that can be operating simultaneously. The ability to window a user's device, whether it be a desktop, a tablet, or a smartphone, like a video wall, now the video wall is anywhere that user is, whether they're in the field or they've gone home at the end of the day and they need to remain engaged with their peers back in the operation center. They now have access to that content and can, video, can window their device like the video wall. When there are multiple sources being presented uh, on an operator's workstation and there's one that's of interest, they have the ability to zoom in on that particular source and gain the information or detail that they need simply by double clicking and zooming to that particular source with their mouse. If you're using a tablet or a smartphone, <clears throat> that can also be done through a double tap on your screen. So we do support touch. You have the ability with Canvas to control PCs and other servers that are in the corporate organization. Again, based on the permissions granted through the Canvas server and the Active Directory integration. This way the operator can use their local mouse and keyboard to make changes to those remote sources to present the information that they need to see. Additionally, through a Canvas client, you have the ability to manage any video wall within the organization by placing content on that video wall or changing the content on that wall or changing a layout on that wall. All that is available to a Canvas client based on the permission set of that user. Outside of managing the content on the video wall, Canvas also allows users to collaborate with one another and use the collaboration widgets or tools within Canvas, such as annotation, whiteboarding, chat, and many others. <clears throat> to kind of get an idea of what that looks like, I'm gonna turn this over to Erwin and he's gonna show you a live demo of Canvas and a client and then two clients and how they're collaborating with one another to share the same content or come to the same resolution. So I'm gonna turn this over to Erwin now. Great, thank you, Craig. Um, welcome to everyone. Before I begin to demonstrate some of the Canvas features as outlined by Craig, I would just like to provide you with a few short details about the configuration I'm currently using for this presentation. I would also encourage everyone to view this presentation in full screen mode as Zoom can sometimes crop the image when scaling. The first system you see will be a desktop client. This will be my primary system that I'll use to manage all aspects of the Canvas solution. The second system with the gray background will be used as my video wall. That one is connected to one of our processors. The third system is another desktop client. And of course, all systems are running the Canvas client software. In some cases, I'll show systems side by side so that when a Canvas function is performed on one client, which is a function that is performed on one client results on another, you'll be able to see the updates as they occur. Now I'll revert back to my primary client. As stated, you have the ability to have any number of clients, and these Canvas clients allow you to achieve several different tasks within the ecosystem. For example, when I launch my local client, I'll be presented with a Canvas panel from which I can choose to do several things. Those of you familiar with the previous version of the Canvas software may notice the new updated 6.0 software interface. So with Canvas, one of the things I can do is I can essentially treat my own desktop as a video wall. Notice across the top, there are several tabs, canvases, shared sources, walls, and invitations. If I select the shared sources tab, I can click and select any of these sources for viewing or viewing and controlling. The source types include IP streams, direct inputs to the processors, remote desktops, 
web pages, just to name a few. If I select the first item on the list, in this case, an IP stream, you will see that it will immediately begin to decode on my local desktop. I can open as many sources as needed. So I'm now windowing my own display. And I'll go ahead and open a canvas as well by going back over to the canvases tab, this time selecting a canvas. Canvas is a collection of sources. So the individual sources that I've opened on my display are the same sources that can be used inside of a canvas. This canvas consists of three IP streams and one remote desktop. I'm gonna go ahead and close a few of these windows just to gain some additional screen real estate. So within this canvas, I can execute certain functions such as maybe zooming on a region of interest Let me do that again, but this time I'll select the remote desktop at top right of this canvas, simply by moving my mouse over the source position and double clicking. Once I've scaled this source, as it's a controllable item, I can right click on the window and select control. Now I can edit the spreadsheet as needed to reflect the relevant details that I need to access. This is a function of the built-in KVM feature offered by Canvas. Once I'm finished, I can terminate the connection and zoom back out to my normal operating mode. Now at this point, I'll bring up a second desktop and I'll open a canvas on that desktop as well. Though the canvases are similar on both desktops, the second desktop has a whiteboard in the canvas instead of a spreadsheet. There's a frame object around that whiteboard with a title in that frame. So Framing and titling is another function offered when building canvases. There's also some annotation included in the police scene, top left. If I open the same canvas on my primary client, we will then be sharing a common operating picture. So, Basically, a common operating picture is being shared across both endpoints, meaning whatever changes applied to one canvas will be reflected on the other. So if I go ahead and make a change maybe on the annotation layer, or maybe if I change one of the sources that are being displayed, you'll notice that the change is reflected across both systems. There are several additional features available within a Canvas as well, such as the ability to use chat tools while collaborating, or the ability to capture a Canvas in its current state for post-event review. We won't necessarily go through all of these features right now, at this point, I'm going to turn it back over to Craig, and I'll come back a bit later and continue. Craig? Thanks, everyone. Great job showing some of the capabilities of Canvas there. So now that we've seen what a Canvas client looks like at an operator's desktop or tablet or smartphone level, now we want to take a look at some other capabilities within Canvas and how we would use Canvas to manage a video wall and the content that's on a video wall. What you're looking at 
uh, here is the Canvas web client and the Mimic function within the web client. The Mimic uh, provides a representation of the video wall that you'd like to manage. And if you notice at the top, there are tabs that are identified as wall one, wall two, wall three, wall four, so on and so forth. By selecting the wall that you want to manage, the Mimic will change to reflect the number of displays that make up that particular video wall. And down the left-hand side, you have your object list where you can select the different types of objects that you'd like to place on the video wall. These objects also provide a thumbnail so that you can see real-time video or real-time content of that source before placing it on the video wall. This allows you to easily identify a source that you want to present before it goes to the wall. And to do that, you just simply drag and drop it from your list on the left onto the mimic. And then you have the freedom to place that anywhere, any size on the video wall. The thumbnails can also be active on the video wall as well. And that is an option that you can turn on or off for security purposes. Uh, with that, you have uh, access to any and all types of video and data sources that can be presented. As you can see, we can do shared sources, canvases, inputs, applications, web pages, clocks, texts, uh, or an image that you can present on the wall. So by doing it this way, a simple drag and drop function makes it very easy for operators to use. And this is also uh, available through our open API for third party control, such as a touch panel. If you'd like to have a touch panel control, that is an option through the API to manage the wall as well. So to take a look at this in, in uh, real time, I'm gonna turn it back over to Erwin and he's gonna actually go through the Mimic and show you how the Mimic works so that you get a better idea and see that. Erwin? Very good, thank you. So as you can see, I've now changed over to uh, split screen mode again, but I'm going to switch this to have my operator's workstation on the left and my video wall on the right. The Mimic allows the operator to manage what's happening on the video wall via their local PC. One way that the Mimic is useful is when you have a fairly large video wall. It can sometimes be easier to manage the items on that wall by looking at a scaled version locally versus trying to manage the items or manage all those objects directly on the video wall itself. This, this can sometimes happen because it can be difficult to view certain portions of the display wall based on your seating position. The Mimic is useful in many other ways as well, but I'll come back to that in a few minutes. When I proceed to launch the Mimic in our new web client, feature of 6.0, I'll be presented with a wireframe representation reflective of all objects currently on the video wall or remote display area. I can use the Mimic to manage all of these objects. For example, if I proceed to my objects list on the top left, which is organized by source types, again, I have my shared sources, I have canvases, but this time I also have applications, web objects, clocks, text, and images. If I want to view one of these sources on the video wall, I can simply proceed to my shared sources list, for example, and expand this category to view a thumbnail of all the sources that are available for use in this folder. So this is a new feature again, newly released, or a new feature that is introduced in the current 6.0 software. I can simply select any of these and drag them onto the display wall. This time, the source will be open directly on the video wall at right instead of on my local client workstation. As you could see, we also have thumbnail previews within the Mimic as well. I'll open 
a couple of canvases by going to the canvas category and click and drag those onto the mimic. We'll scale them up. And even after placing the items in the desired order or location, I can select a source, right click and replace it with another object. As you could see, the change is immediately reflected on the video wall. So the Mimic is an essential tool for managing many display areas such as conference rooms or other peripheral displays when you really don't have a direct line of sight. All you require with the release of Canvas 6.0 is access to a web browser. And if you're outside the building, a secure connection back such as VPN. You can manage the wall from pretty much any location. And again, since the Mimic is now browser-based, you can achieve these same functions just as easily on a mobile device. Also, you're not limited by the operating system of choice. Of course, there are other advanced features within the Mimic. We'll come back to those shortly, but I'm gonna turn it back over to Craig for a few minutes. Thanks, Erwin. So as you can see, Canvas 6.0 with the new web client and the Mimic tool is a very powerful tool to manage your video walls and collaborate with your peers from a simple intuitive drag and drop user interface. And that was important to incorporate in the new version of Canvas. So now we wanna look at taking that a step further. As you saw, Erwin was able to populate a wall with different sources and a Canvas and then be able to change the sources within a canvas to reflect the information that a user needed to see. Now, once all that information is there, we want to save that as a layout because we want to have multiple layouts that we recall at different times of day for different events or different situations that are pre-configured or configured based on uh, a scenario that has been planned for. To do that, We'll save that layout in our layout save menu. And when we do that, a button in our new layout launcher is created simultaneously that is named that the same uh, as the layout that's saved. So if a layout is saved under the name main one or main two, as you can see on your screen, uh, then you'll automatically generate a button. And when you select the layout launcher in the web-based client, you'll be presented with these different buttons that represent the different layouts that were saved. Now, we can do this uh, again, because it's a web client, either on a PC or a tablet or a smartphone, because we're doing this in a simple browser. And with that, the buttons that are created are presented in different ways based on the number, the area of the display that the layout launcher occupies. So on a larger device, such as a desktop, PC, or a tablet, you're gonna have your buttons laid out horizontally. When we move to a mobile device, like a phone, you're gonna see that the buttons now stack vertically. All the buttons are the same. And on that tablet or desktop, if you choose to resize that layout launcher, then the buttons will automatically reorient based on the size of the layout launcher screen area. So that's all automatic. You can search through your layouts at the top. You've got a search bar. So if you want to search for a certain group of layouts that represent either a function or an area or a scenario, you can simply start typing in that information and it's going to present the layout buttons that are associated with that. You can also remove the search bar to clean this up. But what's most important here is that we're doing this from a web client and we're able to create these buttons without additional programming. And again, if you are using a tablet or a mobile device, you can simply double tap on those buttons and launch that layout from your mobile device. 
anywhere in the world. Again, that is secured and encrypted by the sign-on by that mobile client back to the Active Directory of the organization. So there's no concern for information or control outside of that user who has logged in on that device to do that. So here we've got a representation of both the Mimic, as you saw it, in the web-based client, as well as the layout launcher within the Mimic. And then we see that same layout launcher on a mobile device. So you can actually see the progression here from managing the content on the wall through the Mimic, then saving the layout, and then going to the layout launcher, either on a tablet or a mobile device, and recalling that layout through the layout launcher. So I'm gonna turn it back over to Erwin again so that he can actually go through this and show it to you and you can see it in real, real time and how easy it is to launch layouts from a single click or touch of your device that's hosting the Canvas client. Erwin? Okay, very good. So let's go ahead and pick up from where we left off with the last wall configuration. So as Craig mentioned, I can go ahead and save this as a layout and I'll call it All Sources. And I'll save that. And then after I save it, I can basically go ahead and clear everything on the wall using a shortcut button. And of course, the wall will blank. I can go back and simply recall the layout that I just created. So I can create any number of layouts with different source object types, such as applications that can be launched in conjunction with layouts, or maybe I want to establish world clocks along the top of my display wall, or even incorporate a scrolling internal newsfeed at the bottom of the display wall. Once I have a series of layouts, I can launch each one from the Mimics layout menu which is what I've been using up until now. But as you saw in the slides, it's a lot easier and more efficient to do that using the layout launcher. So I can actually access everything from the new Canvas web client. Everything is inclusive. So I could actually go to my Mimic advanced menu and I could select the layout launcher from here but activation can be further simplified by establishing a desktop shortcut, which is what I'll use in this case. So we'll go ahead and close the Mimic or the web client. And I'm gonna go and launch the layout launcher using my desktop shortcut, which is likely what most operators would prefer to do. As you can see, all my layouts previously created are now available in button form. I can also scale and the buttons will auto size to accommodate my screen of choice. And of course, as stated, this is particularly helpful when using the layout launcher on a mobile device. Again, aided by the fact that this can also be launched via a secure web browser in the new 6.0 release. So now, out of the box, you have the added convenience of a user interface in button form where you can single click to launch any layout. Also, one of the new features we added in 6.0 at the very top you have the ability to do searching and filtering. So what that means is if you have a large number of layouts available, but you only need to use a certain few, then you can filter to expose only those layouts. And then you could actually, the administrator can turn off the filtering option. So that can be a fixed configuration for any operator. So I'll go ahead and click through a few of these layouts. First, I'll start by 
just clearing everything that's on the wall. Again, this is a single click. Then I'll go ahead and then maybe look at three or four of these. I'll launch the first layout, which is fairly straightforward. It is a canvas with the three individual sources surrounding it, including remote desktop. Again, this can be web pages and other elements as well. The next layout, layout two, is similar, but you now have the added clocks on the left-hand side, the top left-hand side of the wall, where you have the New York time and you have the London time. So layout three has the same thing, but at the bottom right-hand side of the wall, we have the scrolling text that goes from right to left. And we'll do one more, layout four. Again, these are all just single clicks, or if you're using the layout launcher on an iPad or an iPhone, Android device, it's single touch. This layout has four sources with frames, including labeling. And then on the right-hand side, we have another, another four sources going from top to bottom. So as you can see, using the layout launcher greatly simplifies day-to-day -day use for operators who require minimal learning curve. It's that simple. That's it. That is the layout launcher. Back over to you, Craig. Thanks, Erwin. So as you can see, with the Mimic and the layout launcher in Canvas 6.0, we've got a lot of capability and a lot more flexibility on the devices that we're going to going to be using the client on by simply open by a single click. So this is why we view the new Canvas 6.0 client as the ultimate web app, not only to manage your wall, but to collaborate with your peers and maintain the security of your system and access to the content based on the permissions granted to each individual within the organization. And now users can bring their own devices, whether it's a workstation, PC, laptop, tablet, mobile device, and be able to manage their walls or collaborate with their peers by windowing their device, like the video wall, with similar sources or the same sources potentially. Uh, this also makes it easy for IT to support it, again, because of the Active Directory integration. They're confident that the security of the system is maintained and access from outside the organization is supported through VPN again, maintaining the security and encryption of that content to those users through the Canvas environment, all that content is protected. So that's very important uh, in today's world and, and with the organization's IT group. If you were able to join us last month uh, where we went through the Catalyst family of display wall processors, uh, we learned that there are four different models here. Starting from the left, we had the CRS 4K, our smallest video wall processor. And then progressing to the right, we had the C series, which has more input and output capability than the CRS for small and medium type applications. And then as we move to the next one to the right, the Catalyst 4K, uh, we have more, uh, again, more input and output flexibility for customization for your project or application. And then finally, on the far right, we have the Catalyst XL, which is our flagship display wall processor, which has the largest input and output capability uh, of the group of, of Catalyst processors. All four of these models are running a Windows 10 LTSB app, uh, operating system. This allows users to install and run applications locally on there, as well as decoding streams, opening web windows, running other applications such as clocks, tickers, and then um, being able to manage all that with Canvas because Canvas comes standard with all of our Catalyst display wall processors. And all of the functions that you saw tonight, plus many more, are available with every Canvas client. All of our hardware and software are designed for 24 seven mission critical applications for operation centers and command centers as these are deployed in many, many high availability applications and it's critical 
that the hardware and software are designed for that. So the key part or key points to Canvas are that it creates a common operating picture no matter where you are, whether you're in the operation center looking at the video wall or you're in front of your own device, whether it be laptop, PC, tablet or smartphone, you can now create that common operating picture to collaborate with your peers or others in the organization or other agencies that may be involved in a particular situation or scenario. You can send and share with those users, allowing them to be more engaged and have more visibility to be able to come to a resolution much quicker and more efficiently. You can preview sources uh, on your local workstation through a Canvas client, again, through the web-based client and Mimic, and then send that content to a video wall to be viewed by everybody within the operation center. Every function within Canvas is managed through the Canvas server and the permissions that are granted through the Active Directory integration to view, edit, or control sources or layouts. You have powerful tools such as annotation, both over data, web, and live sources. And with the addition of KVM functionality, you have the ability to control PC sources and servers within the organization from an operator's workstation using the KVM capability. Erwin briefly mentioned about the chat capability. Uh, there's a peer-to-peer -peer chat. And within the peer-to-peer -peer chat, that conversation is shared and displayed on the Canvas clients, but is not presented on the wall because we wanna keep the wall free to show sources and data, but the peer-to-peer -peer chat is there so that users can communicate when they're working on a situation uh, or an event. And then finally, uh, there's a screenshot. This allows you to capture all of the content, all of the sources, in, as an individual source, as well as the chat log, and then a canvas or canvases that were open at the time that the screenshot was triggered that can be utilized for an after action review in a particular situation or environment to see what sources were being used, what the conversation was between users to resolve the situation, and what content may have been presented on the wall in a canvas. So a lot of capabilities built into Canvas. So some environments uh, are in some applications that are, are utilizing uh, Canvas. Uh, healthcare is huge. Today, uh, we have dozens and dozens of hospitals all around the world utilizing the Catalyst display wall processors to drive their video walls and Canvas to manage the content on those walls and also for uh, physicians within the hospital and administrators within the hospital to look at what patient wait times are or to analyze patient flow in and out of a hospital so that they can respond to surges as people come in for care and have the dashboards available to them to view that critical information as well as outside sources such as weather or social media where they may be getting other statistical information that's relevant to them. In addition, these environments typically will use uh, cameras from either the hospital security itself or helicopters or first responders that may be bringing patients to the hospital or clinic for care. They will be able to have access to those sources and present that in the operation center of the hospital so that they can see real time live video of those situations or those individuals that are coming in for care. Utility, uh, another huge market uh, where Canvas is deployed. Uh, again, here you're, we're running applications on the Catalyst display wall processor natively at the entire resolution of the wall so that operators can see their SCADA and be able to introduce other sources that are relevant to that, whether it be web-based dashboards, or potentially news and weather feeds uh, as they manage outages for storms or fires, whatever it may be. And all of our Catalyst display wall processors maintain a NERC SIP compliance for utility applications. 
So that's very crucial uh, for security within the utility environment. And then finally, uh, police, security, government type applications. Uh, these are heavily uh, dependent upon IP streams from street cameras, uh, body cameras from first responders, helicopter cameras, or even traffic cameras that are in the geographic area that they're supporting or responding in. All of those sources, uh, again, are available in addition to web-based sources for weather and social media where they're tracking different events, uh, different situations, and need to have all that available data available to the operators in the operation center and first responders that may be responding in the field. So here's a, an example of uh, a single wall application, it's a single four by two video wall. They've got a catalyst display wall processor in the middle that's running Canvas. And then uh, on the left, we've got our different sources or objects that are available to be viewed on the wall. So we've got applications that may be running locally on the catalyst display wall processor as it's a Windows 10 operating system there, as well as direct connect inputs from servers or local sources that may be in the operations center. And then finally, we've got our IP sources, our network-based sources. These might be H.264 streams from cameras, BNC sources from servers or workstations, or dashboards, web pages, whatever it may be. All of these different types of objects can be presented on the video wall simultaneously, placed anywhere in any size at any time through the web-based Canvas 6.0 client. As these systems or applications grow and expand, we can add additional display wall processors to accommodate larger walls and still have access to all of those sources. And all of those walls and all of the display wall processors can be managed from one operator's position or any operator's position that has permission through the Canvas UI to manipulate content or change content or whatever it may be relevant to the situation or scenario. So very powerful in what can be done. There's no limit again to the number of Canvas clients or the number of Catalyst display wall processors that are managed. The Canvas web mimic will reflect the number of walls in the environment and give you access to each one of them to manipulate and manage. So in conclusion, Canvas can keep you engaged with your organization's operation from anywhere in the world. As we all are stuck working from home or working in the field, it's important that we maintain engagement and visibility to our organization's content, information, and data so that we can maintain the same level of functionality and provide the same response to situations or outages or whatever the scenario might be. Canvas gives you that ability. You have the ability to manage multiple video walls from any Canvas endpoint that has permission to do so. In addition, those Canvas endpoints or Canvas clients have the ability to window their device, whether it be a PC, tablet, or smartphone with the content relevant to their role or function that they need to see and have access to that content. So now, the video wall and the corporate data is available anywhere. Again, and most, most uh, importantly, we need to maintain security throughout the enterprise, whether you're locally connected or remotely connected back to the corporate environment. All that content and access to it to control and manipulate is managed through the Canvas server integrated to the Active Directory of the organization which supports failover. You have the ability to collaborate with other Canvas users so that they can all work together to resolve problems or situations. And you also have the ability from your device to use your keyboard and mouse to control various PC or controllable sources within the organization through the KVM functionality of the Canvas client. And now with the new layout launcher, you have the ability to change layouts or recall layouts 
on any of the video walls through a single click or touch, depending upon the device that you're using to use the layout launcher, which again is a web-based tool within Canvas. And Canvas will run on PCs, iOS, and Android devices. And now with the Canvas web client, the operating system is not as crucial. As long as I can open a browser and I have permission, I can manage the environment for the Canvas wall. As a follow-up to this webinar, uh, the regional sales managers responsible for your given area or geography or country are going to be following up with you uh, as they have your information from the registration to see if there were any additional questions that may have come up as a result of the webinar that you didn't think of now and you may think of later. Also to work with you on any uh, applications that you may have, any projects that you may be working on where this may be a good fit. And they also have uh, our field sales engineering team, uh, such as Erwin and others, to work through complex designs uh, and work up quotes for you on those specific uh, applications. So uh, that's gonna be available uh, and we'll be following up with you on that as well. We're also gonna have a, uh, another webinar uh, next month and we're gonna continue on with this series of webinars uh, on a monthly basis. So look for additional emails inviting you to those webinars where we continue to expose all the different capabilities and solutions that Jupyter Systems has to offer. But please you know, take the time, uh, reach out, and follow us on social media as we have several updates uh, that we push out through those different platforms and you can follow us there to get the latest uh, information on our systems and solutions. But please feel free, uh, again, to, to go to the website, uh, jupiter.com, to look for any information there or to reach out to any of the Jupiter Systems team. Thank you for taking this time this evening, and uh, we look forward to seeing you on our next webinar.